horror anthology is much loved and has an established pedigree across all forms of entertainment. From twice told tales by Nathaniel Hawthorne in 1837 to Clive Barker's Books of Blood in the mid 80s and with the likes of Blackwood, Poe and Lovecraft in between, short story horror writing has long been a popular format. Largely regarded as the first published horror anthology, Twice Told Tales is a collection of mostly previously published stories from The Token, an annual illustrated gift book published in Boston. The author of Twice Told Tales, Daniel Hawthorne, was born on July the 4th, 1804, in Salem, Massachusetts. His great-great-grandfather was John Haythorne, a Puritan, and one of the judges who presided at the Salem Witch Trials of 1692. In 1842, Edgar Allan Poe reviewed Twice Told Tales for Graham's magazine, concluding that Hawthorne was a man of indisputable genius. By this time, Poe, also from the state of Massachusetts, had already written his own collection of short stories for publication. This collection, titled Tales of the Grotesque and Arabesque, was published in two volumes in 1839. The horror anthology had become a recognized format, and after also writing many short stories for newspapers and magazines, Algernon Blackwood's first publication, The Empty House and Other Ghost Stories, was released in 1906. Blackwood went on to write such classics as The Willows and The Wendigo, which was first published in another anthology, The Lost Valley and Other Stories, in 1910. Fast forward 74 years to 1984 and the first publication of Books of Blood. Each book was a collection of horror stories written by British author Clive Barker the first of which catapulted Barker to legendary status in horror writing, with Stephen King proclaiming him the future of horror. Several of the stories from Books of Blood have been adapted successfully for film, including Rawhead Rex and The Midnight Meat Train. Barker adapted The Yattering Jack in 1986 for use in George A. Romero's anthology TV series, Tales from the Dark Side. I take it, we will remain. Short form storytelling arrived on a new medium in 1938 when the radio show, The Mercury Theatre on Air, broadcast an adaptation of Dracula. I have never seen Count Dracula by day. At sunrise, at the first cock crow, he is gone. The series was the creation of Orson Welles and John Houseman and became most famous for its broadcast of War of the Worlds, which terrified listeners, believing that the alien invasion was a reality. From 1942, the radio drama series Suspense broadcast more than 90 short plays on CBS radio for 20 years, often featuring some of Hollywood's leading stars. Initially, the series seldom used material that would be classified as horror, fantasy, or science fiction, but by the late 50s, this became a regular occurrence, including material such as H.P. Lovecraft's The Dunwich Horror. One episode, The Hitchhiker, broadcast in 1942, featured a performance by Orson Welles and was later adapted for an episode of The Twilight Zone in 1960. 1947 saw the debut of Quiet Please, a radio horror and fantasy series created by Willis Cooper. Cooper had been a writer for Orson Welles' Campbell Playhouse, which had succeeded the Mercury Theatre on air. Which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and features Ernest Chappell. Quiet Please for tonight is called Camera Obscura. The play's scripts often broke the fourth wall by speaking directly to the listener technique much adopted in later horror anthologies. In his book, Terror on the Air, Horror Radio in America, Richard J. Hand wrote that Cooper had enjoyed creating roles for the audience, including implicating them in the action of the story itself, indicating a clear desire to create horror as interactive entertainment more than 70 years ago. The show ran for two years. Forward 50 more years in radio, and in October 2010, we see the debut of Larry Fessenden and Glenn McQuaid's radio show, Tales from Beyond the Pale. 
Successful genre filmmakers in their respective rights, the two began producing episodes under Fessenden's studio, Glass Eye Picks, influenced by the works of Boris Karloff, Peter Lorre, and Orson Welles. Fessenden would later partner with the show's sound designer, Graham Resnick, to write the scripts for supermassive games' critically acclaimed horror debut, Until Dawn, and for the first game in their Dark Pictures horror anthology, Man of Medan. In film and TV, short format horror has been successfully represented many times since The Twilight Zone in 1959. Created and presented by Rod Serling, The Twilight Zone ran for five seasons on CBS from 1959 to 1964. Each show was a standalone story featuring characters faced by surreal and often disturbing events. Serling's introductions and conclusions to each show summarized the story and provided some justification for the events and, often, the moral of the story. In 2016, Rolling Stone placed The Twilight Zone at number seven in its list of the greatest shows of all time. The 1972 film, Tales from the Crypt, is highly regarded by fans of the genre. Starring Peter Cushing and Joan Collins and featuring Ralph Richardson as the Crypt Keeper, it is an anthology film based on stories from EC Comics and one of several amicus horror anthologies produced in that decade. And in 1989, HBO launched a horror anthology series under the same name, also based on EC Comics, which ran until July 1996. 1982 saw the release of Creepshow, a dark comic horror anthology film directed by George A. Romero. Influenced by and a homage to the material from the EC and DC comics of the 1950s, its entirely original material was written by Stephen King, and it is a somewhat tongue-in-cheek expression of the horror genre. 25 years on, and in 2007, Trick or Treat presents another set of horror shorts as a dark comedy horror anthology film. And then, in 2012, a very different anthology film with a very different tone, VHS. Created by Brad Miska and Bloody Disgusting, an American horror genre website and film production company, VHS is a much darker horror anthology film. Comprising six short horror stories and linked by a found footage theme, two of the stories, Second Honeymoon and Tuesday the 17th, were written and directed by Ty West and Glenn McQuaid. Other examples in film and TV that are more than worthy of mention are Roger Corman's 1962 anthology, Tales of Terror, based on three Edgar Allan Poe short stories and featuring Peter Lorre, Vincent Price, and Basil Rathbone. The 1963 Italian horror anthology, Black Sabbath, narrated by Boris Karloff, the TV series Night Gallery, a spiritual successor to, or certainly a close relative of, The Twilight Zone, fronted again by Rod Serling and focusing more directly on horror, which ran from 1969 to 1973. Stephen King's Cat's Eye of 1985. John Carpenter's 1993 film Body Bags, featuring the likes of Sam Raimi, Wes Craven and Mark Hamill. And Southbound a 2016 road trip horror anthology by a number of the collaborators on VHS. From written fiction through radio, cinema and TV and now video games, horror anthology is a format that both creators and horror fans enjoy. And it's a format that has existed for almost 200 years. Long may it continue.